Boost in both directions along with Plashit Road and that's because of an ongoing investigation. Queues on the A12 southbound to the M25 junction and that's following an accident. In Tolworth it's very busy on the Kingston Road going northbound to the Tolworth roundabout at the A3 junction and that's because of a burst water main. Very busy on the A1M southbound to junction 7 at Stevenage South. Now there was some debris over the motorway. All the lanes are open now but it's still slow and on the underground there are minor delays on the Hammersmith and City Line. This is LB BC. Nick Ferrari now, 0345 6060 973, LBC. Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 11 minutes before 8, we'll come back to our conversation concerning the 12 months that the country has endured and the possible stumbling block as well over the pause for the vaccines for the under 50s. And indeed, let's put that to a member of the Cabinet Housing Secretary, Robert Jenrick, who joins me now. We will talk about the initiative, I promise you, concerning rough sleeping in a moment. But this obviously is front page news and a great cause for concern. We hear it's down to lumpy delivery, Secretary of State. But AstraZeneca saying last night the supply chain is not experiencing any disruption. Who's telling the truth? Good morning. Hi, good morning, Nick. Uh, well, we always said from the start that a new manufacturing process would have its ups and downs. We've had some in the past, and no doubt we'll have some in the future. We are experiencing some supply uh, issues, but the good news is that we are still very much on course to meet our objectives, which are to vaccinate all 
of those groups one to nine by the middle of April. Those are the people most vulnerable who account for 99 percent of mortality and to give every adult in this country their first jab by the end of July. So there's no cause for concern, but we are going to be experiencing some issues for a couple of weeks until international supply uh, wraps up again uh, at the end of April. But I, I just put it to you last year on this, AstraZeneca say there are no issues. What, why, why is the government saying there is, or there are issues, I'm sorry? Well, this isn't just about one manufacturer or so the issues uh, are with one Pfizer, manufacturing are they? plant. There are, we, we source vaccines from uh, many manufacturers and from many parts of the world, and there are some issues internationally with the supply of vaccines. Uh, Which one? This. AZ or Pfizer? Well, it, it, I don't think it would be right for me to, to say Why? Uh, wh which manufacturer or in which location those issues are coming from. Uh, this is actually All right. being Is it tied up with the European... The, is it tied up with the war of words... Mr Jenner, is, is it tied up with the war of words with the European Union? No, this is, this is an international issue. There is a, uh, a finite supply uh, of vaccines and for a short period of time we'll have less than we might wish but not more than we need to meet our objectives and that I think is the important thing for your listeners today that we're still on course to vaccinate those groups that we said we were going to vaccinate in the month of April one to nine and anyone who has an appointment uh, either for their first or, or more importantly for their second jab will still have those appointments uh, honoured and I think April will be a month in which we see more second jabs than first jabs. That was uh, something that was quite likely given the number of people who got their first jabs at the beginning of this year. It's important that we get those jabs into people's arms and we continue to meet our broader objectives. Right. Moving on with the theme that every cloud has a silver lining, it's safe to say that those people who rough sleep or who have housing issues have in some way been looked after in a fashion that might not have been the case but for COVID. Various initiatives have been uh, started. I understand the government is keen to support those. What exactly is happening with that, Secretary of State? Thank you. Well, as, as you say, um, one of the uh, rare uh, rays of hope in the dark cloud of COVID has been the way in which we as a country have looked after those sleeping rough on the streets. We brought 37,000 people in and have given them better accommodation. The vast majority of those people have now moved on from the temporary accommodation like hotels and B&Bs that they were put in at one point and are now in move on accommodation, the private rental sector or, or good quality long term social housing. Today we're announcing further funding so that over this parliament we'll invest in 6,000 homes specialised in supporting rough sleepers and so not only will they be homes but they'll have wraparound care for the other needs of those people like substance abuse and mental health concerns so they can begin to rebuild their lives because we want to take advantage of the position we find ourselves in today which is relatively low levels of rough sleeping and ensure that we don't slip back and that we actually build on this and so we can meet our broader objective which is that nobody should have to sleep rough on the streets of this country and that we have rough sleeping at its lowest possible level by the end of this parliament. Staying with the impact of COVID on the housing market, Secretary of State, you'll be aware that last week the ban on evictions was extended now till the end of May or the beginning of June for commercial evictions. Um, if we come with residential, there are landlords now who are virtually at their wits end. They've had no money in some instances for two years, if not more. They still cannot evict tenants who are breaking the law and not paying the rent. Why is this government supporting that illegality? Well, we've tried to strike a balance between... Where's the balance? Well, the balance is that we've had a ban on evictions and bailiff activity during lockdowns yes. uh, when we didn't want to see people being asked to leave their home and finding it very difficult to find alternative accommodation. I've got that. that I'm looking to forward to the balance. And, rough sleeping and, 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 and needs to be avoided. Right. But we're also ensuring that uh, landlords, particularly smaller ones, as you say, can be in a very difficult position, can take action in the most difficult circumstances. No, but that so is only an antisocial and events no, which, no, are, not which, which, which not are very actually, rare, House Secretary of State. It's not just antisocial behaviour. Uh, if an individual is six months in arrears with their rent, uh, then a landlord can also take action. And so we've, we've created a number of circumstances, egregious situations, where if you're six months uh, behind with your rent, if you've 
uh, been responsible for antisocial behavior, if you're an illegal immigrant, if you're a domestic abuse perpetrator, if there's fraud, a number of different circumstances. In those situations, then a landlord can take action and can uh, get that tenant out of the property. And I think that's absolutely right. But not very quickly. You are you saying balance. six months? Are you, are you sure of that? Six months not paying your rent, they can then get that person evicted almost immediately? Uh, well, it, 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 it's six months rent arrears will then enable them to begin the process and so then they would obviously but you can't get to, bailiffs they'd to make have personal to serve a, 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 they'd have to serve a notice now. and there would be a notice period yeah. uh, beyond that but bailiffs can't get access to properties currently well they can't because that's because we're at this stage of the roadmap so we chose that during lockdown when we're asking people to stay local uh, not to move around that we shouldn't have bailiffs asking people to leave their homes but as soon as we move into uh, the next phase or beyond that in the lockdown uh, or in the roadmap out of lockdown okay. rather then people will be able to do that kind of activity. Staying with housing issues, it seems a ping-pong is on between the House of Commons and the House of Lords over the fire safety bill. The Lords voting again to protect leaseholders from having to pay any cladding costs, which could protect thousands of people, of course, from potential bankruptcy. Do you support the Lords? No, we don't think this is the right way forward. We so announced people should go a bankrupt. Plan. Uh, we announced a plan earlier in the year, which is backed by over £5 billion of taxpayers' money, and this ensures that Nobody in a high-rise building should ever have to pay for the removal of unsafe cladding. That will either be pay, paid preferably by the people who got us into this situation, the developers, the builders, uh, or, or their insurers, or if that's not possible, it will be paid by the taxpayer. Then on lower-rise buildings, we've created a heavily subsidised financing scheme, which means that nobody would ever need to pay more than £50 Mr. a month, Jones, and in yeah. many cases, a lot less than that. We, we've talked about these figures before. Do you, You're going to tell me that £5 billion covers everything? It covers all the cladding on high-rise buildings. And it covers the so whole issue, because the most conservative estimates estimate. yeah, is around 11, isn't it? 11 billion. Well, the the I have I don't know I haven't seen a figure of eleven billion pounds. You previously quoted a number to me that the House of Commons Select Committee mm. uh, had produced, but our estimate is it will cost three and a half billion pounds to remove all of the remaining unsafe cladding on high-rise buildings. We've already put one point six billion pounds behind but the issue. So the amount of money that we're committing is sufficient, we believe, and if we need to put in more money, we will do to do the job. Ah, if you need to put in more money, the most do, dangerous we'll material okay. off the buildings where and, the and risk what about of life those individuals living at a lower level, Secretary of State? What happens to them? Well, for those, and remember that they that the risk is less there and in many cases they won't need to take the cladding off at all because we want a sensible risk-based approach to be applied here but for those leaseholders they'll be able to use our financing scheme which is heavily subsidized it will cost billions of pounds depending on the uptake itself and this will mean that you'll never need to pay more than 50 pounds a month towards the cost of the removal of unsafe cladding and i appreciate that that's uh, an imposition that's something that nobody would want to have to do but for most homeowners that will be something that is affordable and is a fair balance between what the taxpayer will have to cover and what uh, the homeowner the leaseholder has to pay lastly i don't know whether you have in sight a possible summer holiday many of my listeners possibly do they're said to be 50 billion pounds sitting in people's bank accounts desperate to get away for a break will there be summer holidays out of this country in your view secretary of state well, I hope so. But the answer for your uh, listeners is to wait until the outcome of the International Travel Review, which Grant Shapps, the Transport Secretary, is leading right now. And so by the middle of April, he will have reported back. And I think that's the moment when people should take those uh, those decisions if they don't want to be disappointed. What's your sense at the moment? Well, I think you're going to have to wait for that. I mean, I hope to. What, what, to okay, what, what will inform? I'm, what will inform your colleague? What, what will I'm going to be going on holiday within the UK. Are you? Uh, yes, but I think if you if you want to travel abroad, mm. it's absolutely key that we don't speculate and that you wait to see what no, the outcome of that. Uh, that's very is. fair. But what will inform Mr. Shapps lastly? What What are the are the dynamics or the science? Or what is he? What will he be looking at? Well, he'll be looking at the uh, state of play with the virus and vaccine rollout in a number of countries around the world particularly looking in detail at the countries where Brits are most likely to go on holiday. 
um, and also right. the, the different mechanisms that other countries are putting in place, like for vaccine certification, vaccine okay. passports and so on, and seeing what sorts of procedures we can use to ensure that our citizens are safe when they go abroad and, of course, when they come back to the UK. Grateful for your time today. Thank you, Mr. General. Robert Jenner, Housing Secretary, appearing here on LBC, where at 8 o'clock, news is next. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at eight o'clock, the under 50s are facing a longer wait before they're eligible for coronavirus vaccinations. NHS England has warned of a month long significant reduction in supply starting at the end of March. But both Pfizer and AstraZeneca, the two suppliers for jabs in the UK, have denied they're facing any problems. Linda Bald, a professor of public health at the University of Edinburgh, says it's believed a delayed shipment from India is to blame. There's five million doses they were due to ship. So 